Weather Authority. All right, taking a look at the latest with Hurricane Dorian, we talked about how the possibility of drier air may impact the storm, and it's getting pulled into the storm. You can see it on the satellite right there just a little bit. It's not going to tear it apart. There's no great news out of this drier air, but it's going to help it maintain Category 1 strength instead of rapidly intensifying. It's pulling away from the drier air and the little bit of shear it's encountering over the next 24 hours, so then we'll see some rapid intensification. That starts on Friday morning. Tomorrow morning, it'll be up to 110 miles per hour in a category two system and then by Saturday morning it's up to a category three hurricane with 120 mile per hour sustained winds. It, maintain, it maintains that category three storm strength until landfall. Right now the entire state of Florida is included in this cone of uncertainty including southeastern Georgia but it's because the two forecast models were so widely split. When they made this forecast at 5 a.m. The GFS was pushing into northeastern Florida and the Euro was pushing into southeastern, excuse me, South Florida. Now the GFS has shifted and it's become a more halfway point. And so when we take a look at what that could mean for us locally, uh, also, one thing you need to note is that it's very fast forward motion until Saturday morning. It slows down Sunday into Monday especially, and so that's a later impact time regardless of whether it ends up. It would be a more Monday impact time instead of late Monday, into Monday so starting Monday morning. So let's talk about the two different forecast models. This is the Euro that pushes it into South Florida. And so in terms of impact on our area, the Euro pushes it into close to the West Palm area. So when you look at rain, we're only looking at about an inch or two of rain leading up to this system's landfall. And then wind speeds only in the 20 to 30 mile per hour range for Jacksonville. Now it would be much worse across southeastern Florida, across South Florida if this played out with a southern landfall. But for our area, this is a best case scenario in terms of wind, only in that 20 to 25 mile per hour range in terms of wind gusts for us and only a little bit of rain basically typical amounts of rain over an inch. Now, the different scenario with the Euro is that it then dissipates the system and pushes all the rain across the state. Once again, we can deal with rain. So here's what the new GFS model run looks like. And models do shift and turn. And so this may change again, but this is better news. We'll take any good news we can at this point. The GFS landfall has now shifted a little bit further south. Earlier, it was close to Titusville. Now it's a little bit further south than that by about 75 miles. And the impact that that changes for our area, if this scenario were to play out, uh, we would see lighter winds. So we'd still see some tropical storm force winds by the end of Monday into Tuesday. And so we're looking at 47 to 55 mile per hour winds Tuesday morning and chances for rain up to about two inches at this point. But earlier, this forecast model was showing winds around 100 miles per hour. And so 66 mile per hour wind gusts is a much better scenario for us than 100 mile per hour wind gusts and rainfall closer to three inches so heavier rainfall with the GFS as opposed to the euro so that's the difference in the forecast models we will continue to update you as we get more information the next track that comes out from the National Hurricane Center is at 11 a.m. and we'll be live on air showing you that. 